Is it me? Okay. Good afternoon, Day of Pentecost, Full Gospel Church. So glad that you could be with us again this Sunday afternoon. Hold on a minute. Dropped. Oh, dropped my flag. I brought that back again. I, oh, I like that. I've become a banner waving preacher. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Oh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Every day that you get up and you can rejoice in the Lord, it's a good day to be in the presence of the Lord. So I thank God for that. I got to get my screen adjusted, right? It looks like all I'm seeing is the top of my head. So bear with me a minute while I get this situated just right. See if that works a little better. Well, I'm just going to have to deal with it the way it is. But I want to share with you a very familiar passage of Scripture. And the Scripture that I want to share with you is one of my favorites. It comes from Psalm 27. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Amen. One thing hey, have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. And therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me and put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait 
on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, 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 I say, hey, on the Lord. Woo! Oh, praise his holy name. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Woo! I say, on the Lord. Oh, glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Say 
for our sermonic scripture uh, this afternoon. I want to call your attention to Romans 8, 28 through 39. Uh, this verse had been ringing in my spirit um, most of the last couple of days and last night the Lord really was dealing with me um, as I thought of several things particularly some of the events that had been going on in my life over the last year and um, hearing the phrase going over and over in my head about divine appointments. Amen. And last night I um, was up till about 2 o'clock, no, it was closer to 2.30, quarter to 3. And finally, there was a song that was ringing in my spirit, and I asked um, Lisa to include a couple of songs in the songs that we played. Amen. And uh, one of them was a song by a lady um, whose last name is A.G., and it was called God Did It. Amen. And the words of the song are everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. And that song just kept going over and over and over in my spirit. And some of you may have heard the song before. If you haven't, you can look it up on YouTube. We couldn't play it in the uh, video because the YouTube police or the uh, video police would have shut down the live feed. So you just have to look it up and listen to it on your own. But, um, and then the other one was um, Clay Evans um, from Fellowship Baptist Church in Chicago, the late Clay Evans, leaning on the everlasting arm. Uh, so those two songs we added this, af this afternoon. And the scripture that I want to read with you, as I mentioned, was Romans 8, 28 through 39. And with the emphasis on verse 28. And we know that all things work together for them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, or put right with him. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? 
It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall sell tribulation or stress, or, or shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My topic this afternoon, all things working for our good in Christ. Thus, that song that was ringing in my spirit, everything happened to me that was good, God did it. And I want to look at the fact that there are no coincidences with Christ. And we'll look at the fact that God sits, sets up divine appointments. Amen. Now that phrase I've heard and used quite a bit over the last year. And then I've also used a couple of times and heard a couple of times, oh, it's a God thing you wouldn't understand. Yeah, amen. You ever heard that before? Huh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a God thing. And if you don't know Jesus, you just wouldn't understand. Yeah, amen. Oh, amen. Mm. Oh, 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 give me a minute. Jesus, you have to have been through something Amen. to know that you know that you know it's a God thing. When somebody says, I've been set up, I've been set up, and not only did he set me up, he pushed me over and showed up. Are you willing to trust God on this journey of your Christian walk? Now, I, I had a conversation with someone uh, this morning on Messenger, and we were sharing the fact that we both have trouble trusting people because of past experiences. Yes, yes. And you know, when you've been hurt by folks mm -hmm. that you yeah. put your trust in, mm -hmm. it's hard yep. to trust again. Yeah. When you confide in folks and they betray your confidence, it's yeah. hard to trust. Amen. When people have caused you PTSD, and I found out, I used to think a long time ago, PTSD was just for military folk. No. And I found out a few years ago when I got diagnosed with PTSD, and I said, I wasn't in the military. He said, you don't have to be in the military. All you've had to do is go through something traumatic. I said, oh? 
Well, I'm not going into where I got my PTSD from. I'm going to leave that alone. Because it was from a couple of different major train wrecks in my life. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. Because then folks will be wondering, who, what, when, where? Yeah. Nobody's business. There ain't nobody business but me and Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. Because that's one of the reasons I don't trust folk. It takes me a while to get to trust you. And if I trust you, consider yourself one of the highly favored Amen. of the Reverend Dr. Walter A. Jackson. If you on my list of folks that I trust, because you don't get in to yep. my trust circle uh -huh. nope. too easy. Nope. Nope. Now there's some folks sitting in Day of Pentecost Full Gospel Church that can tell you mm -hmm. the story, and even they don't know the whole story. There's a whole lot of folks would like to know the whole story. Ain't nobody getting the whole story. The only person to know the whole story, I must tell Jesus. Amen. Amen. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear this burden alone. Amen. I better leave that alone because I feel the fine hairs on my back of my neck rising up right now. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Jesus. Mm. So are you willing to trust Jesus on this God journey, your Christian walk? Now, have you ever... I'm trying to... Trying to hold it together because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go run for us, run. But you see, <laughs> have you ever thought of situations that happen and said, oh, what a coincidence? Have you ever thought that? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know somebody's heard it. Oh, I know somebody said it. Oh, I don't know whether my sister's listening or watching or something like that. Oh, sister girl, if you listening, we got to have us a conversation Ooh. later. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Hmm. Oh. The stuff we used to think was a coincidence. No, no. Ain't no such divine thing. Right. Yes, divine intervention is a God thing. And if you ain't in Christ, you just wouldn't understand. No, yeah. no. And when I think back now, even to when I before I was saved, and if you're saved now and you think back and just take a minute to think back in your life. When he saved you, when yeah. you saved. And when you weren't saved, and you think back over situations in your life before you got saved, oh. That's why that happened. Yeah. That's why that happened. God was setting me up yeah. to bring me to where I Whoa. am right yeah. now. Amen. And if he was setting me up to bring me where I am right now, yes. then it doth not yet appear what I shall be. Yes. But when he shall appear, I shall be like him. Amen. He ain't through with me yet. No, not at all. Oh, there are divine appointments. And then there are glorious divine appointments. Mm -hmm. And each divine appointment is God preparing you for something new. Ooh, go yep. ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, preach it. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. Hallelujah! Oh, some of the divine appointments ain't pretty feel good. Oh, warm, fuzzy. Let me have a cup of cocoa moment. 
Sometimes some of them divine appointments Sometimes are painful. They hurt, Sometimes <laughs> they hurt, just like a booster shot. Amen. Amen. Just like a bone marrow biopsy. Oh, and oh. I can speak the story on that. When they numb you and stick a needle in your hip and say, you're not going to feel that. And you say, say what? Yeah. Well, what am I feeling now? Oh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. And you start humming, and then the technician who's on the other side of the room, she started humming along with you. And you tell her and said, oh, Jesus, in another minute, I'm going into tongues. She says, I'm right here with you. And she starts stomping her foot, and you go, mm -hmm. She says, oh, I hear you, brother. Then she, you, you know she done tapped into your spirit, too. Amen. And she's feeling what you feel, and even Amen. though she yeah. ain't got the needle in her back. And the doctor say, talk to me. I said, if I talk to you right now, you ain't going to understand what I'm saying because I'm getting ready to go into a heavenly language that you don't know. And, and, the, and the technicians over on the other side go, hey. I said, are you speaking my language? Ooh. Oh. That wasn't. That wasn't a, oh, a feel-good moment. No. It was painful. But the outcome was glorious. Still praising. And I'm still praising him. Oh, divine appointments is God preparing you for something new. It could be a new level of maturity, a new level of worship, a new level of fellowship or ministry. And I can't stop telling you enough over the last year, every doctor's appointment, the stay in the hospital, all of those were new levels of ministry where I got to witness, share, and even lead somebody to Christ. Amen. And if I hadn't been there, though painful and traumatic as it was, if I hadn't been God's person in that place at those particular times, there would have been people that I would not have been able to reach and it probably would have been taken longer for somebody else to get to them. Yes, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Everything that happened in my life that was good, God did it and is still doing it. Uh, Thank you. Daryl Coley, the late Daryl Coley, had another favorite song of mine. Oh, and sometimes when I hear it, he's now probably singing around the throne of God but I can still feel the anointing of that song. The words of that song are, he's preparing me for something I can't handle right now. Oh, and when I hear that, it just sends glory bumps up and down my spine. And because if you're in Christ, he's definitely doing that. Amen. And if you're not saved and God has been drawing you, yes. I don't care how long you resist. If God is trying to get you to the foot of the cross, I'm telling you right now. Oh! If you're running from him, you can run, but you can't hide. If you've left him, and he's been trying to get you back. You can run, but you can't hide. Mm -hmm. He's drawing you. He's drawing you. 
I don't care how far you run, the Spirit knows how to reach you. I keep saying, I won't be done my work until the Lord says so. Mm -hmm. The last word I got in my marching orders, 105. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. And unless he says something else, 105 at least, and that's it. We'll be there to take care of hey. you. Hey. Mm -hmm. We'll be right there. Yep. And, he's, and right now, he says, I'll be in my right mind. Yeah. He says, I'll be in my right mind. And so, that's what Daryl Coley, late Daryl Coley said. He's preparing me for something I can't handle right now. So, he takes us by steps into something else. Now, if we, yeah, I can't wait till tomorrow either. Because tomorrow is another day. I saw that text too. <laughs> I, oh glory. See everything that happens pops up. I can't wait until tomorrow either because tomorrow's a new day to do something glorious for God. Amen. And I can't Amen. wait to get back to my little kids because, oh, I miss, them. Woo, I miss them babies. And I can't wait to get back to see them. Yeah. Yeah. The babies that seemed that nobody wanted to nobody be with. Nobody wanted them babies, but you nope. came in there and loved them. I came in there and I loved them little Amen, babies. Amen, Pastor. Amen. You and, changed their world. Oh, and I, I can't wait to see my babies tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And as I mentioned, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. If you love him, everything's going to work for your good. And so he sets you up to do some things for him. And so he's orchestrating that plan. And, you know, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, uh, I, I have uh, things that I do. Now, in this iPad, I've got a boatload of of sermon notes, Amen. which are my plans for the sermon. You know, and I basically do an outline. Mm -hmm. I don't do a manuscript, because to me, a manuscript limits, you. limits me. It's like putting handcuffs on me. Can't I, I, I can't, I can't, there's no room to me. If I do a manuscript, there's no room for God to move. Amen, amen. Say but when amen, God amen. speaks to me, he gives me the general outline, and then I follow that, and then God steps in and gives me things to put in the outline. I have a general idea Amen. of where I'm to go. He gives me the scripture, and God begins to minister to me from that. But if I do a manuscript, then the manuscript ties Amen. me down. Amen. I can't work like that. Now, other preachers, maybe God deals with them differently. Uh, I only did a manuscript, I think, the first couple of years when I was preaching and the sermon was so short preachers would invite me because they knew I was only going to preach for about five or ten minutes and then I'd be done. But you see, and I still have some of these sermons and I can remember the first sermon I preached, my, my initial sermon, the stick God gave you from the story of Moses on the backside of the desert when he was listening to God speaking from the burning bush. I still have uh, that sermon. Amen. You see, and I can remember it just like it was yesterday. And I can remember my Aunt Katie teasing me. Never mind, we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But anyway, we laughed about her teasing me about my sermon. And so when I look at that, you know, and, and I look at the book of Romans being the source of the five major doctrines of the Bible-believing church. Condemnation. Justification. Sanctification. Glorification. I mean, 
Yeah, just a, a condemnation, sanctification, justification, glorification. glorification. Yes, and, and so there are five major doctrines in the, in the church and, and consecration. That was one I couldn't, couldn't get off my, my tongue. So those five major doctrines are found in the book of Romans. And, and so those come up, each one, and several of them are mentioned right there in the passage that I read. Because you heard me mention uh, condemnation. You heard me mention justification, which is being put right with God. Amen. And you heard me mention being glorified. And uh, the consecration is when you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And then, you know, one of the things I like is that the whole time that God is working for our good, Jesus is in the midst making intercession for us Amen. at the Amen. throne of yes, God. Yes. So don't think when you're going through something, you're not alone. You're not alone. Yes. No, never alone. from God's love. Not two government mules nor spotted dog can separate us from the love of God. I don't care what it is. You can bring two Mack trucks, a freight train loaded down with cement. I don't care what it is. You can't separate us from the love of God. And you know, when the devil comes at me, you know, I know all I've got to do is call on the name of Jesus. I was, yeah. I was teasing, teasing a couple of my young folks a little bit earlier today before the service start. We were kind of joking around. And I was joking, but I was serious as a heart attack. I made up this little song. I had a tussle with the devil, but I won. Amen. And I, I was singing my song, and they got to laughing. And I told my sister, and I kicked him in the teeth, and I won. Yeah. And I stomped him on the head, and I won. And I just kept singing my song because I'm thinking about how everything the devil threw at me, I've come back at him, and I won because of the blood of Jesus. And, you know, we've got to take that same stand. Every time the devil comes at us, don't focus on what he did. Just come back at him. Come on now. Come on, I got you this time because of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Everything that God did in my life that was good, God did it. And you out of the picture because of the blood, 
that Jesus shed on Calvary. You know how they used to do, back in the day, they used to put a block on your shoulder. Knock that block off. They was just waiting because they wanted to take you out. Come on, knock that chip off my shoulder. I dare you. You see, all I do is just, I'm covered by the blood. Now, come on, come on, try, just try, just try. And the word says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Devil, you don't stand the chance. Because I'm covered by the blood. And all things working for our good in Christ, God got me. And Jesus makes intercession for me. Amen. Night and day, day and night, 24 7. And I have the victory. And there's nothing the devil can do about me. Yeah, I know my town fell, but I'm standing on it. I'm standing on the promise. Ha! Thank you. So even under my feet, I'm covered. That's right. Amen. So, you know, my mother and my father used to have a phrase when you know, my sister and I would get out of sorts. Don't try me. And don't poke your lips out. Now fix your face. My face is fixed. Amen. My heart is fixed. And my mind is made up that I'm going all the way with Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that everything that you do in my life, even if I don't see it right now, my soul will one day look back and will wonder, Lord, as my grandmother would say, reckon how you got that done so I get over. I know it was all because of the blood that you shed on Calvary. And even while I was sleeping, you were making intercession. Lord, I pray. Oh, I pray that somebody in the sound of my voice touched by these words Lord let somebody in the jailhouse I don't know how but let them hear these words and let them get right somebody in the hospital that said woe is me let them hear these words and say Everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right because Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Somebody is feeling defeated. Turn that around and let them feel victory. Victory not in themselves, but victory in Jesus. And Lord, that is my story, and I'm sure enough, going to stick to it. In Jesus' sweet, melodious, and holy name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.